Thanks a lot. Let's see if this works. Now, if you have technical difficulties, I really <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate getting the chance to come talk. Uh, probably most of you are familiar with Ford Products GM and Toyota Products. Let me ask, does anybody own a, a John Deere piece of equipment? Right? Oh, great. Wonderful. Oh. I thought we were going to have to ask about hats, okay? <laughs> John Deere hats? Yeah. That works? That's great. Right. Yeah, toy? Toys? I got, I got a lot of those too. So those are always fun too. So uh, just kind of want to give you a, a, an overview of here, probably just from our, uh, a little bit about our global product and global footprint, uh, and so that you can get an understanding of that, but then uh, kind of roll a little bit into our, our uh, manufacturing requirements and, and needs and how we're using it, very similar to how Allison spoke about it. Just real quick, I got a few pictures here, just to give you a, a, an array of some of our products and our, and our customers that we have. We are not just the big green ag equipment. We also have an extensive cust, uh, construction and forestry uh, division and uh, home care uh, commercial products too. So we really uh, we are truly a global company. We have uh, four distinct customer focused regions around the world uh, that we uh, uh, we actually uh, put our marketing efforts into our customer uh, deep customer understanding in those areas. And uh, also, we put our manufacturing units, and I'll have a have a slide here in a minute of where our manufacturing units are in our global world. Just real quick, uh, uh, some of you might know our, our ag equipment, uh, combines, uh, tractors. Some of you may not know most of these nowadays. You don't steer them anymore. They do have a steering wheel, but uh, we use GPS technology. So uh, as they're in the field, uh, these are these are pretty well driven by themselves nowadays. It's uh, some of the most innovative work that uh, I think you'll ever get to. Uh, especially after a, as you work through that, so it releases the stress and fatigue on the operators, uh, so they can focus on the uh, the field work. Uh, just a little bit, big big tractors. There's our uh, some of our uh, ag and, and uh, some of our turf equipment. Uh, so we do have an extensive uh, lineup that serves in the golf and turf arena, and uh, also as probably some of you guys have, this. lawn equipment is probably uh, some of the more popular uh, piece of equipment that we're proud of. Uh, Construction equipment, uh, we, uh, we are very proud of our construction lineup that we have as we continue to expand it. Um, and then uh, also, this is just another uh, picture and slide. And then uh, some might not be familiar with our forestry equipment, which is this, this is just some really fascinating equipment that can uh, uh, go through and uh, really size the size and, and strip uh, forestry. And uh, it really, if you ever get a chance to see this, you're, you're in, in awe whenever they, they work through it. So real quick, here's our manufacturing locations that we have. We're, we are present in 35, or we have uh, in, in uh, over 35 countries. Uh, you can see that uh, a big focus is in North America, South America, also in Europe, um, uh, the, the EU 27 states. Uh, we are also moving in more into China and India with uh, as we expand our operations and in those parts of the world. So this is important to know because we're going to talk about some of our needs and uh, as we grow into uh, some of these emerging markets uh, and places where the uh, customers are moving to more mechanized agriculture, uh, there's a need as we move our manufacturing locations close to them also. This is a little bit about uh, just some examples. I'm going to just kind of flip through a few slides of how we use some of our ergo and virtual tools today. Uh, you can see here, this uh, has to do with a, a, a workstation design uh, where we're able to uh, simulate that. We, we use a Viz Oscar, a, a Jack uh, also, uh, whether it be a, a, a very similar process, a design for manufacturability process uh, prior to, to builds going on uh, where we try to evaluate uh, the, the workflow of the cell uh, and ergo aspects of it. Uh, we also have uh, used it where we bring actual operators in and, and get them using the, uh, the, the virtual tools uh, to try and make improvements of loading carts and uh, uh, tool designs and sling fixtures and get a feel for how that's going to work for them. Uh, some other areas that we use it for, this is just uh, how can we improve the, the ergonomics and reach of, uh, of an operator, uh, how can we uh, make product design changes. One thing that we want to do is whenever we try and drive these changes, uh, we want to do it early enough, and we all, not always can do this, but early enough that we can actually have influence over the product design, which means uh, we can uh, maybe move a, a, an access point 
uh, or uh, move the, the cart designs or actually move the final product, uh, make changes to that. So uh, we want to be as proactive as possible, uh, but um, that's, that brings challenges with it also. Uh, obviously, weld access and gun angle, so we've moved it into our, our uh, welding um, environment, and that competency. So we look at uh, how, uh, how well can we get to it. Welding is uh, one of our core competencies that we have as a, as a manufacturing unit, uh, but uh, it can be very difficult whenever you're trying to get into the weld angles and uh, it's going to be a manually welded type of um, operation. So although we have uh, lots of robotic welding, we do a lot of manual welding also. And then this is also kind of looking at some uh, installation, so back to some design for uh, uh, manufacturability. Uh, how do we reach this? How do we uh, work with the, the installs and um, work through those aspects of, of uh, our assembly? What's some challenges and needs that we have? We really kind of have broken that down into five uh, key areas. Uh, we'll just talk real quick, translation time. Uh, we want to be as, as proactive as possible. However, we get into the elements of trying to get the right files to come together. Uh, we need interconnectivity with our systems that we have today, and we need some uh, better and quicker ways of auto translations and, and some standard formats to get from our, our, uh, from our pro e worlds and our, our jack worlds to bring those together quickly. We, we, have, uh, we feel a little bit of a reactive process today. Uh, we need to wait for designs to get done. Uh, we'd like to, to work better in our processes to simulate concurrently with the design uh, phases and, and processes so that it's not a manufacturing comes in uh, after the fact to start making ergo uh, changes or we, we have to work around it. Uh, virtual reality is another area that we're moving towards. We've done virtual reality on a product side for a while. Uh, we're starting to move into virtual reality assembly, full assembly inside, a, inside the cave, inside the booth. Uh, where we can actually do a complete work cell design. So not just an ergo reach, but uh, we can also look at how we uh, apply our lean principles into a, a work cell prior to, to, to building any product. Uh, human efficiency, we need to know the balance between too much strain and uh, we said too little. Uh, we don't want to, uh, to be complacent in what we do here. Uh, so there is a balance between uh, keeping them um, active in it. Skill sets, uh, usability is another area. Uh, we talked about our, our global environment, but we also have um, we have what we'll call kind of more of our level five pathfinders, who are uh, very engaged in this on a daily basis. And then, as we develop new products, um, we get into uh, more of folks that might deal with this on uh, every maybe 12 months, 18 months. And so, how can they be able to implement and use some of this technology? and not have to be kind of at this level five pathfinder type of level. And then the expanding growth. Our global aspects, uh, where we're growing to, I mean, we, if you follow Deer, you see that we've recently announced uh, some new factories uh, going in, in China and, and, and in India and uh, Russia. Uh, those are areas that uh, we're expanding quickly to and because the products and the, the customers are demanding our products and we have to be closer to the the, the point of usability. So those are some of our needs that we see from manufacturing. I uh, just wanted to drop real quick on our needs that we kind of see from a product side. This is a couple of operator stations that you see. I did mention uh, that you know a lot of some of our equipment now has GPS, so we, we drive and steer by it. But you can kind of see if you look inside these, uh, uh, it's still kind of like a command center for the for the operator. Uh, lots of movement, lots of buttons, lots of uh, hand joist, uh, even with. Uh, I know from the combine side, you know, we've got uh, three touchscreen panels that are in it uh, that have tons of information that's coming together. Uh, we're moving to logistics type services that uh, uh, can be worked with. But anyways, as you bring more of this together, uh, if you have ever spent time in one of these pieces of equipment, kind of sit down, it feels kind of neat, you know, and, and it's nice to drive and if you, 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 you kind of move through it for the first hour or so, it doesn't impact you much. Our operators are in these uh, pieces of equipment sometime for 12 to 16 hours in a single day. And so uh, those are times whenever you can really tell, where am I stretching to? Where am I, I uh, moving to? Uh, I grew up uh, in some of these things, and I remember uh, in the, in, uh, that at the end of the day how, how I would be sore on the right side. Uh, my dad said, just tough it out, which I did. So, uh, But uh, we kind of want to move to make that a, 
a more uh, pleasing experience. So just uh, from our products needs complexity, uh, we got to minimize the decision points that the uh, operators are using. We need to simplify our whole process. I just showed you, those are, those are our operator stations that we have today. Uh, lots, of, lots of different uh, buttons and functions that uh, those machines uh, can do. Uh, same thing, reactive. Uh, we also have to get our design of operator stations more proactive uh, where we can actually start laying out designs in a, in a nice feel and a nice flow prior to having to, to build any hardware. Uh, that stuff gets expensive. Our, our prototypes uh, are, are incredibly expensive and obviously by the time you get to that, uh, things start baking. They start kind of firming up. So we'd like to, to be more uh, on, the, on the proactive. Um, human efficiency, we got to allow them to, to conduct their value add work. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, you can do in those machines and, and we want them focused on the value add work when they're in there. And then uh, uh, our skills, um, we need uh, better ease of use uh, on that. It's very similar to our manufacturing side. We get that also on our product design side uh, where we have some folks that you know, stay very focused on um, human interface, uh, but uh, that's not necessarily a mainstream type of skill set. So uh, that's really uh, what I had. Just wanted to give you an overview of Deer as a company, some of our product, and how that relates to our manufacturing challenges and our ergo challenges that we have, uh, along with our products. So thanks a lot. Thank you.